Uh, I'd like to welcome Ashok Sehgal, MD Frontier Technologies, uh, on, onto the program as well. Frontier Technologies in general, we were just hearing about what's happening in the technological area. What are some of the things you think the government can do to keep the technological momentum going? Yeah. And is that going to be the real secret for success now yeah. in the present environment? Uh, Vikram, I think uh, the, the name may be slightly more misleading. We are not yeah, in the IT sector, but more with the MSME sector. So, But every technology that, is important. Yes, every technology is important. I think particularly for the uh, medium and small industri industries, uh, technology is very important part of improving productivity, improving volumes and improving global competitiveness for a very important sector which is already contributing a significant amount to exports. Now we need to spread this message down and take it down also to the micro sector so that those who are not in the major metro cities can become part of the supply chains. So we are making an effort there in technology dissipation through uh, what CI is doing is holding digital saksham. Uh, classes in workshops in tier two cities and in rural areas so that people in those rural areas can become part of the supply chain. I think it is important that the MSMEs become part of the overall supply chain, which would be, of course, be driven by the government policy and the large corporates, but it has a trickle down effect to the MSMEs. So we're really looking forward to stimulus from the government in this. So this, I mean, again, I'm not sure whether there'll be a fiscal stimulus, but certainly there could be directional voices that are being heard. And if you hear, I'm again continuing to take clues at this stage before she starts speaking. All we can do is take clues from what may or may not be there in, in, the, in the review because it's, it's a statement of, of intent of some sort. Government's very clear, obviously, that India should become part of the global supply chains. And MSMEs, as you correctly said, should also be brought into it. Government's done X amount of things when it comes to infrastructure, digital infrastructure, and logistics, which enables it to happen. What's the unfinished agenda then? I think the unfinished agenda really is that a lot of the funding which the government is providing uh, needs to be translated in, on the ground through easier participation by the MSMEs. You see, mm. the policy is all very good. The allocations in the last mm. budget were good and we hope that trend will continue in this budget. But the physical difficulties of disbursement of funds and timely availability access to funds, particularly related to matters of delayed payments, which hold back MSME growth, is something which the government addressed in the last budget through Section 43B, where they have uh, disallowed uh, uh, they disallowed the expense on, pay, on per things purchased from MSMEs but not paid within 45 days as per the Act. Yeah. Now, these kind of things would ease the availability of finance, which in the past has been skewed, with MSMEs in effect funding the larger companies' working capital and themselves being starved for it. So, putting, implementing these kind of changes is what we are looking forward to being a major uh, benefit out of this interim budget. The lack of finance, the problem of not having finance, is it less of a problem now than it was, let's say, five years ago or six years ago, or, you know, when that twin balance sheet problem was massive and banks themselves were under financial stress, gross NPAs had jumped uh, a, a lot. Is the access to funding now still a major uh, problem or less so? Uh, no doubt is better than five, six years back. I mean, we can't deny that. But the fact is, we still, the only way, they, we, we need to improve private consumption. As you know, the we, we, government is putting, has done a great job in putting a lot of money in infrastructure, government spending. But we have to get uh, uh, funding, money supply going in the market, both on the demand and the supply side, at a lower cost. So no doubt, there is definitely more access to capital, but the cost of capital has gone up over that period of time so that it has to be and there are other things like ecbs you know which was talked about in the budget in the past and then it's a bit vague especially in the real estate infrastructure how much you can use ecb so we certainly still need to do more on the funding side but no doubt a better situation than before so on personal taxation because from a housing yeah. point of view what you said you know bring back some of those yeah. deductions yeah. give some incentive for housing put more disposable income into the hands of people so that income tax goes down I would be, actually it's election year, so you never know, it's possible it could happen today, but it could be a break from convention if you actually had too many tax reliefs. But maybe directional uh, indication that we believe in the Laffer curve, we'll keep on bringing the taxes down. Is that something that would bring a smile to your face? Oh, absolutely, because, you know, the numbers show it. The ones those incentives are taken away, so straight away the supply and demand side both have declined. So this is just clear statistics. And if, but the and, new tax regime, if they don't have 
concessions, don't have all of these exemptions, just put, give direct uh, disposable income to people and they'll eventually spend it. Any way the money comes into the hands of people, both and, and also incentives of developers to go after doing affordable housing. Right now, for even to someone to construct, there's no incentive because you have so many, you have got radar, you have got so many other things and the cost of money is high. Nobody wants to, uh, and if the supply doesn't come in, uh, and, and then again, as you know, the construction uh, industry and housing is, has a huge multiplier impact on so many industries. Okay. So it's Fine. a no-brainer. I mean, it's not that there will be a big favor if they do that, you know. Ajit Khurana now joining us, uh, founder of Reflexical, former head of Blockchain and Cryptocurrency Committee uh, 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 of India. Mr. Khurana, new age, new generation, technology, crypto, blockchain, these are some of the areas in which there's still uh, questions around regulation and how it should be regulated. This is obviously something which you might get some directional signals uh, in the interim budget. What are you hoping for? Uh, what sort of signals would you like to hear? when it comes to areas like cryptocurrency or blockchain? Actually, what I would like is that the signals we have already been getting, including at the G20 conference, be implemented in letter and spirit. Currently, we have two huge problems. Number one is draconian tax laws, which don't allow offsetting of losses, which have a tedious component at every transaction, regardless of the profitability of it. And on the other hand, Despite being such a strong tax law, we don't have regulatory clarity, which keeps most of the people out of this industry. Right. If I, if I could just, if I could just, 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 just come in, you know, this is one area where regulation becomes important. I've heard a lot of people in the startup ecosystem, for example, uh, what was just now happened with the with with, with Paytm, with the, with the Paytm Bank and the RBI. Is this a is this a fun, foundational concern? that can regulation come in, can regulation come and change the rules of the game and what would happen? Would that be one of the biggest things that areas like yours would have concerns over? And startups in general, what's the overall regulatory framework, not just now, but one year, two years, three years for, uh, ahead? Got it. So globally, two approaches that have been taken is that the smaller financial haven-like countries have come up with new crypto laws, but the larger economies such as US, Canada, Singapore, England and the like, have read crypto into their existing laws. Largely, this is what it is. We expect that crypto regulations will go likewise and India will not be left behind. But at this point, we are definitely lagging. And unlike the Paytm issue, where the central banker says that, hey, we had rules, you didn't follow them. In the crypto industry, we are screaming and saying, give us the rules, we will follow them.